hello students now the final topic from the anterior abdominal wall which i'm going to take is transversalis fascia okay this is the final topic which has to be done in the anterior abdominal wall and this will finish your chapter now uh, we have done the layers of the anterior abdominal wall the first is the skin the superficial fascia then the external oblique muscle the internal oblique the transverse abdomen the transversalis fascia okay we have done in transversalis fascia one important thing in inguinal canal that is this transversalis fascia it contains deep inguinal ring okay which is the inlet of the inguinal canal so one important thing or one important landmark is the deep inguinal ring which is present in the transversalis fascia or fascia transversalis okay now we'll study uh, what are the boundaries of this fascia and uh, we'll study what is its importance this transversalis fascia is important in your viva point of view and in the dissection point of view this fascia you should be aware of okay so we are going to study the layer transversalis fascia okay now this transversalis fascia is by definition it lines the inner surface of the abdominal muscles so right now only i have shown you the layer the skin the superficial fascia then the external oblique in, internal oblique transverse abdominis and then the fascia so this muscle layers upon neurosis are there and then the transversalis fascia so this fascia is lining the inner surface of the abdominal wall muscles okay so it is lining the inner surface of the abdominal wall muscles if you know the layers of the anterior abdominal wall so it is lining this is transversalis fascia and it is lining all the inner surface of the abdominal muscle so one by one the skin the fascia superficial then external internal transversus abdominis and then the transversalis fascia so when you cut the abdomen anterior abdomen first would be the skin then second would be the superficial fascia then external oblique muscle upon neurosis internal oblique muscle is upon neurosis transversus abdominis okay and then your fascia will come okay so that is transversalis fascia so by definition it's a fascia which will line the inner surface of the abdominal muscles now it separates it is separated from the peritoneum by the extra peritoneal connective tissue now if you see here i have shown the layers here now this fascia transversalis fascia it separates the muscles from the extra peritoneal fascia so it, this is the muscles then the fascia and then this extra peritoneal fascia parietal peritoneum then visceral peritoneum and then mesenteries so this transversalis fascia will separate the abdominal muscle from the extra peritoneal fascia so it is in between the abdominal muscles and the extra peritoneal fascia okay and then comes the parietal peritoneum visceral peritoneum and the mesenteries okay so this is your transversalis fascia so there is transversalis fascia then extra peritoneal connective tissues or the extra peritoneal fascia and then the peritoneum that is visceral and parietal it's a that part of fascia which lines inner surface of the transversus abdominis muscle so if you see the layer mostly it is lining the inner surface of the transversus abdominis the immediate muscle so first when you dissect the skin will get dissected then superficial fascia then external oblique muscle then internal oblique and then transversus abdominis so this fascia is very close and it lines the transversus abdominis muscle okay it is very close to this muscle okay now next thing in this is what is its extent what is the extent of the fascia 
how much to how much part is this fascia extended anteriorly would be linea alba above and umbilicus now if you see one diagram which i'll show you this is a diagram in which you can see okay have a look up this diagram this is your linea alba yes this is your linea alba okay this is the upper neurosis of external oblique muscle so this is external oblique upper neurosis it unites you know in the midline okay forming the rectus sheet linea alba okay then the next is the upper neurosis of the internal oblique okay then comes the upper neurosis of the transversus abdominis muscle and this blue part which you are able to see here okay this is your fascia transversalis this okay this is your fascia transversalis so what would be anterior to the fascia transversalis everything the upper neurosis of external oblique the upper neurosis upper neurosis of transversus abdominis all this muscle upper neurosis will be the anteriorly extent of the fascia transversalis as well as the linea alba also the umbilicus okay so this is your fascia transversalis okay anteriorly would be the muscles upper neurosis as well as the linea alba okay this line linea alba and the umbilicus Okay. now what would be the posterior relation what would be present posterior obviously posterior would be everything which is related to the posterior abdominal wall what is related to the posterior abdominal wall there are two fascias renal fascia renal fascia is a fascia which is covering to the kidneys and the next is the thoraco lumbar fascia that is also an important topic in the posterior abdominal wall that i will take in detail so anteriorly of the transversalis fascia would be all this muscle posteriorly would be the posterior abdominal wall the renal fascia and the thoraco lumbar fascia okay understood superiorly what you will see superiorly it is not seen in the diagram dear students so superiorly would be your diaphragm and the covering of the diaphragm that is your diaphragmatic fascia okay so that would be present superiorly okay so superiorly would be diaphragmatic fascia inferiorly what would be present inferiorly to the fascia transversalis inferiorly would be your iliac crest if you imagine your your iliac crest of the hip bone that would be present and the lateral half of the inguinal this is anterior anterior bow and that is posterior means below this below this fascia transversalis i am talking about superior would be diaphragmatic fascia and inferior okay inferior would be iliac crest okay the lateral half of the inguinal you know medial half it forms the floor of the inguinal canal so lateral half will be inferior to the fascia transversalis okay and also the fascia related to iliac bone fascia iliaca that is also present inferiorly medially what would be present medially pubic tubercle pubic crest the pectineal line okay so that, so that would be present medially to the fascia transversalis and the fascia extends the anterior wall of the thigh and it forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath we have done in the lower limbs the femoral sheath so this fascia transversalis in the thigh area it forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath so again we will take what are the extent of the fascia transversalis now this is the fascia transversalis you can see here okay this is your transversus abdominis muscle and its upper neurosis 
can see whitish color is a ponderosus this is your in iliohypogastric artery so this is your internal oblique muscle this reddish reddish and it's upon neurosis is your whitish and above is the external oblique muscle and its whitish is the upon neurosis of the external oblique you can see so upon neurosis so extent would be on this is your fascia transversalis so above anteriorly we have seen the layers of the abdominal wall so anteriorly would be the upon neurosis this is above this is fascia so anteriorly above would be all the layers which is above the fascia transversalis so anteriorly would be linea alba correct anteriorly would be the umbilicus anteriorly would be the upon neurosis of all the three abdominal muscles posteriorly so if this is fascia transversalis okay above would be all the muscles below okay below will be the posterior abdominal wall the posterior abdominal wall or you can say below would be the extra peritoneal fascia the peritoneum yes parietal and visceral peritoneum then the renal fascia thoracolumbar fascia that would be posterior clear yeah. superiorly would be the diaphragmatic fascia inferiorly would be the inner lip of the iliac crest the crest iliac crest would be your the lateral half of the inguinal ligament would be inferiorly okay and fascia iliaca medially if you see medially would be pubic crest pubic tubercle and pectineal line okay and this extent up to this so what is the extension of this fascia transversalis anteriorly it extends up to the upon neurosis the linea alba and the umbilicus posteriorly it extends up to the thoracolumbar fascia and renal fascia extra peritoneal then superiorly it extends to the diaphragmatic fascia inferiorly it extends to the lateral half of the inguinal ligament the iliac crest fascia iliaca so that fascia is inserted to all these parts what i am talking about okay medially it is inserted or it is extended up to pubic tubercle pubic crest pectineal line and it extends up to the thigh and it forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath so this much is the extension of the fascia iliaca matlab itna phaila hua hai wo that much it is extended okay in this this area now the important landmark in fascia transversalis here is if you see there is a presence of deep inguinal ring here this is a deep inguinal ring which is present in fascia transversalis that i have taught you in inguinal canal video deep inguinal ring which is present in the fascia transversalis and this is the inlet and from there superficial inguinal ring which is present in the upon neurosis of external oblique so this is fascia transversalis okay deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring okay now this you know deep inguinal ring the contents of the inguinal canal spermatic cord in males and round ligament of uterus in females that we have already done okay now we'll see what is the prolongation of the fascia transversalis how much it is extended that we have seen in the mon in the uh, video of the inguinal canal i have already shown the spermatic cord and it is covered with spermatic fascia so if you see here this is fascia transversalis okay okay this fascia transversalis this is a cord so this fascia transversalis is forming the internal spermatic fascia you see here this blue color this is fascia transversalis and it goes down it covers and it is forming internal spermatic fascia you can see here blue color so this fascia transversalis it covers the spermatic cord it is forming the covering of the spermatic cord okay forming internal spermatic fascia so fascia transversalis when it covers the spermatic cord it is 
covering it is forming the internal spermatic fascia you can see here this is internal spermatic fascia and this is fascia transversalis so it forms internal spermatic fascia of the spermatic cord okay the next is when you see conjoint tendon is the next part okay now if you remember the internal oblique aponeurosis as well as the cremaster muscle it forms the cremasteric fascia which is the cremasteric fascia surrounding the spermatic cord and the last is aponeurosis of external oblique it goes down and covers the spermatic cord and forms the external spermatic fascia so if you see the diagram a fascia transversalis it goes down and it covers the spermatic cord and it forms the internal spermatic fascia that i have already explained you so two landmarks of fascia transversalis first it contains deep inguinal ring okay and second is it forms the covering of the spermatic cord that is the internal spermatic fascia fascia transversalis it covers the spermatic cord and forms the internal spermatic fascia the next in the middle is the cremastric fascia which is formed by the cremaster muscle and the internal oblique muscle and the third is the external oblique aponeurosis which will cover the spermatic cord externally and forms the external spermatic fascia okay so this is fascia transversalis going down it forms the internal spermatic fascia this blue color the internal oblique cremaster muscle it forms the cremastric fascia this is the cremastric fascia this reddish orange and the greenish color is external oblique aponeurosis it goes down spermatic cord and forms the external spermatic fascia covering the cord so this is the main thing which you have remember in fascia transversalis this fascia transversalis is also prolonged in the thigh area in the anterior wall and it forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath now the main arteries of the pelvis and the anterior abdominal wall lies in the fascia transversalis so three things you have to remember deep inguinal ring is present in the fascia transversalis it forms one of the covering of the spermatic fascia that is internal spermatic fascia is the prolongation of fascia transversalis and the third thing is main arteries of anterior abdominal wall is present in the fascia transversalis and main nerves are outside the fascia transversalis so the main arteries of the anterior abdominal wall and of the pelvis is present in the fascia transversalis and the nerves are outside the fascia transversalis this fascia is important in the dissection purposes when go in lab practical you, you will able to see this fascia so important landmark you have to remember deep inguinal ring it's a prolongation covering the spermatic cord spermatic fascia it forms internal spermatic fascia it also prolongs in the thigh area and it forms the anterior wall of the femoral sheath the main arteries of the pelvis and the anterior abdominal wall lie in the fascia transversalis so this finishes your all the important chapters or all the important top topics in from the anterior abdominal wall hope you all understood it and any query just let me know okay next time we'll continue with the posterior abdominal wall we'll start with that topic that chapter please read from the textbooks and any query let me know thank you students